Today's video is brought to you by Legendary Worlds, an adult coloring book filled with 85 hand-drawn illustrations of castles in the sky, crystal caves, underwater realms, prehistoric times, outer space, and all the other fucking shit your mind uses as a screensaver when you're blazed, you know? You can get it at colorworth.com with the coupon code TJ Kirk, all one word, TJ, no space, motherfucking Kirk. You can also find it on Amazon.com. I know a lot of people like to use these coloring books to just relax and zone out. It's very therapeutic, and this book definitely has some fun shit to color, so check it out. Legendary Worlds. Support our sponsor. Link is in the fucking description. Protesters in North Carolina pulled down a Confederate monument and proceeded to spit on it and kick it and shit in a display of fucking spastic, chest-thumping bravado like... like you. We've enlightened. Yeah, we smarter now. We're not the same dumb hairless apes we were back then, and we're gonna prove it by going, oh, 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 bad statue! Statue bad! For many people, monuments to the Confederacy have become active symbols of white nationalism and white supremacy, and so now battle lines are being drawn with those who support taking down the monuments being painted as Virtuous little angels. Even as some of them brandish baseball bats and smash out car windows, and those who oppose taking down the monuments are being portrayed as Nazis and other assorted racists. In a moment, we're going to look at some of the things my respected contemporary Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk had to say about this angry mob in North Carolina and about the issues that animated them and that animated the recent turmoil in Charlottesville as well. But before we look at what Kyle had to say, I think it's fair that you should just kind of have an idea where I stand on the issue of Confederate monuments. So, um, I'm not given to deep feelings of sentiment, uh, nor am I an especially nostalgic person. For these reasons, I have no particular affinity for monuments of any kind. To me, history is to learn from, not to enshrine, nor to worship. I don't make any claim that I'm totally divested from the past, because I'm not, but I'm far more interested in experiencing the present unfold and in watching the future materialize. I don't believe that everyone should feel this way. Uh, in fact, I'm glad not everyone does, but that's how I feel. And so on the subject of whether a Confederate monument stays or goes, my position could best be summarized as, I don't really give a shit. And from my position of not really giving a shit, I can do what I do best look at both sides and say, fuck you, you're both wrong! <laughs> now let's take a look at Kyle's video. Look, when I, when I saw the video, I was like, okay. I'm, I'm against property damage as a general rule, of course. But when I'm watching it, I'm going, yeah, I can't bring myself to get mad. <laughs> I can't bring myself to get angry at it. Um, Okay, so Kyle's first point is that he doesn't feel any genuine anger towards the people who tore the statue down. He thinks they look ridiculous and they're way too into it. Okay, keep it real. Regardless of what you think about the situation, they look like a bunch of spazzes when they were, like, hitting it and stuff and spitting on it. But he's not really upset by what they're doing. Well, I'm not either. But my reasons are the ones I discussed earlier, chiefly that I don't really give a rat's ass about any of this shit. Kyle has different reasons. Here's why I couldn't bring myself to get mad at it. I mean, it really is the case that, to black Americans, this is like a, a statue for Himmler or Goebbels in, like, a Jewish area. 
I mean, you could try, no, it's not like that for reasons and stuff, but it really is like that. Yes, the Civil War was fought over slavery. Yes, the South was on the side of keeping slaves. Um, that was the point. And then you have fucking, like, there are still schools named after people who were KKK leaders. Okay, so was the Civil War fought over slavery? Yes. Yes, big helping of yes, but you know what? A little side of no as well. When Lincoln won, despite not winning the popular vote and despite not even being on the ballot in many southern states, it was feared by what would later become the Confederate States of America that Lincoln was uh, too far to the left on the issue of slavery, that he sided far too much with the abolitionists. Now, Lincoln's position on slavery at the time was essentially... The places where slavery already is can keep slavery, but slavery cannot be allowed to spread beyond those places. Now, for the time, this was, of course, the moderate position, but this position was intolerable to the South, so one by one, Southern states declared their intent to secede from the Union. It was then that Lincoln basically said to them, no, there's no fucking secession allowed. When you join, you join forever. America's like the fucking mafia. You know, you don't get to be a made man and then it's like, sorry guys, these hours are crazy. I gotta, I gotta go. Nope. Only one way out. Death. A lot of these southern states never would have joined the Union if they'd have realized that this was the position of the federal government. Up until this happened, states just sort of assumed that they were free to go. So calling the Confederacy traitors might be too strong of a word. They didn't seek to overthrow the North just to escape its governance. If not wanting to be governed by someone far away who doesn't share your values, and you decide to break off from them, if that's treachery, then every founding father is every bit as guilty of being a traitor as the Confederates were. Now, the majority of Southerners didn't even own slaves. About 26% of free households in the Confederacy were slave-owning households, so about one-fourth. So why would you go to war over that? You would think that the 74% of families who didn't own slaves would be like, uh, fuck you guys. I don't want to go to war so that you can keep owning people. I don't get any benefit out of that. So what's it to me? But you know what? You know who really, really owned a lot of slaves in the South? Rich people. Rich people who owned big fucking plantations with huge workforces of slave labor work in the fields to produce cash crops like cotton and tobacco, you know? And all the rich folks, they called all the shots. They called all the shots then, just like they call all the fucking shots now. And you know what? You think it was any different for the founders back at the start of this country? They were wealthy too. The founders were a bunch of wealthy, rich bastards who fermented the American Revolution and they did it for their own fucking benefit. They did it not because they wanted to free the people from being ruled by the British, but because they wanted to be the rulers. The people of the colonies, by and large, were not interested in the Revolutionary War and most of them tried to steer clear of it. Most of those who did fight did so because they were either brainwashed by notions of honor and glory or because they were being paid. Same reason people fight in wars to this very fucking day. Those with money have always been able to get the poor people to fight for causes against their own interests. It was the case during the Revolutionary War, it's the case now, and it was certainly the case in the Civil War, which kind of falls right in between those two things. So, for instance, although a lot of people volunteered to fight when the Civil War broke out, on both sides, mind you, it quickly became apparent to everyone that this war is fucking horrible. And so no one wanted to fight it. No one wanted, no one, everyone was like, this Civil War is fucking insane. I hate this. I don't want to do it. It's fucking crazy. So in, eight, in 1862, both sides started drafting. But guess what? Both the Union and the Confederacy provided loopholes for rich men so they didn't have to fight. 
It was commonly said at the time that the Civil War was a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. So while I don't really get emotional seeing people tear down and stomp on a statue of a Confederate soldier, I do find them to be a bit simple-minded. The animosity they have towards the symbol of the Confederate soldier is one of intense hatred. When it's just a statistical reality that many who fought for the South did so because they were conscripted by the governing body of where they lived. You know, yeah, maybe you don't support the Confederacy, but if you live in fucking Mississippi or some shit and you're under the fucking Confederacy and they come to you and say, hey, we're your fucking government, you're going to war, you, you don't have many choices at that point. You're probably going to take the path of least resistance, which is, fuck it, I guess I'm going to war. The next point that people make, and this is a fair point to make, they say, well, hold on now. So if that's your rule, it can't be like, you can't have monuments to slave owners. Well, then what about the founders? The founders own slaves, and what are we going to do? We're going to tear that down and then just get rid of all of history because we don't like the way that they did stuff back then? And... Look, my response to that is, I don't think having a general rule of no reverence for slave owners, I really don't think that's a high bar to meet. Now, furthermore, when people make, well, look, the times are different. You can't really judge people in the past based on the standards that we have of today. That's a point that a lot of people will make to defend keeping up, you know, um, statues like this. And my response is, that's a that's just a form of watered down cultural relativism. Like, hey, can we really judge people from back then with the standards that we have today? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so, I'm not a moral relativist. I'm a moral nihilist, and it's my belief that people conform to the pressures of the times in which they live. Uh, I know you like The Walking Dead, Kyle, if memory serves, and if I'm wrong about that, then just fucking humor me for a second. But in that show, right, the good guys do some stuff that if people did that in the context of our society, we'd be like, fuck, that's horrible! But when they do it, we understand why. First of all, because they're fiction, but more importantly, because they live in a world where the pressures are very, very different. The same can be said of our ancestors. Judging people from the past by the standards of today just doesn't make any sense. Not in my opinion. If there's one thing in your video that we fundamentally disagree on, it's this point. To my way of thinking, first of all, context absolutely matters when appraising a person's behavior. And second of all, moral judgments about a person's behavior are the least interesting and least valuable judgments we could possibly make. When I look back at history, I'm looking not for the goodness or the badness of people's behaviors. I'm looking for the efficacy or the failure of their behaviors. When I look at Genghis Khan, for instance, I'm not wagging my finger over his atrocities as if my judgment means a goddamn thing. I'm looking at his accomplishments and how he made them. I don't care if his brutality was bad. I only care if it worked. And if it worked, how can I apply that lesson to my life? Now, obviously, I'm not going to go around from village to village telling them to serve me or be destroyed because I don't have an army. But maybe one day I'll find myself in a situation where that philosophy or that anecdote or that story or whatever can be applied metaphorically to what is hopefully a less bloody analog of that situation. Uh, if you're still not sure what the fuck I'm rambling about, let me just put it a different way. Let's say, Kyle, that you become an immensely important figure. Obviously, you're already important and you have the ears of many people and I've always admired the responsible way that you use their attention. But let's say you make it to the next level of important where you actually become like a historical figure yourself. Let's say you make it to the level of like a Thomas fucking Jefferson, you know? or like a John F. Kennedy or something. Then, let's say 200 years later, the morality of the world changes, as it always will, and something uh, that was once benign now casts you as a fucking monster! Kyle Kalinske, fuck him! He ate meat! 
He was a fucking animal killing piece of shit. We're all vegan now in the future. Discount everything he ever said or did because he endorsed the murder of sentient beings. Kyle Kalinske, yeah, he might have revolutionized the way people see the world and led an interesting life full of valuable lessons and shit, but he also admitted on several occasions that he jerked off to women with huge asses, which is now a horrible moral crime because feminism won, and now everyone with a penis is basically a fucking demon, and therefore let's tear down his statue and put up a statue of Hillary Clinton instead. A true feminist icon! People really want to believe that they're good and that where they come from has no bearing on how they feel. But the reality is that none of us really knows how we would be if we were plopped down at a different point in history. Maybe if Kyle Kalinske was born in 1830s Mississippi, he's whipping slaves in the field and volunteering for the Confederacy the moment the war breaks out. Or maybe not. Who really fucking knows? There's way too many variables for us to even guess. But do I think slavery is objectively wrong? No, because I don't think anything is objectively wrong or objectively right. I just think that human beings adjust morality based on the conveniences and the pressures of the time, suffocate their doubts under justifications and cloak their ambitions and desires with lofty do-gooder bullshit. And even if I did believe that slavery was objectively bad, I wouldn't discount everything else a person ever said or did just because they owned slaves. It's like if I'm eating a sandwich and I say, Holy shit! This is the best fucking sandwich I've ever had! It's so expertly made! And the flavor is so sublimely perfect! And then someone says, Oh yeah, well the guy who made that sandwich is a serial rapist! Well, it's still the best sandwich I ever had, right? The taste of the sandwich hasn't changed! The only thing that's changed about it is, fuck, I hope that's mayonnaise. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand that we really, really, really want to think of ourselves as good people, but I've got to go with the Joker on this one. Play the Joker. You see, their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. We've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. And yeah, I know in the movie he's proven wrong when the passengers of two boats choose not to blow each other up to save themselves, but I think we all called bullshit on that, right? I know I did. Overall, I enjoyed Kyle's video. I think he did a great job, as usual, explaining exactly how he thinks about the issue. If we differ at all, I think it's primarily on the point that he feels that moral judgments applied to history are meaningful, and I simply don't. He also thinks that people's emotional responses to history are important. And once again, Sorry, but I don't. To me, history is a fascinating look into human psychology and an interesting tool to examine the present and predict the future. Now, are there historical figures and events that I admire? Yes. Are there historical figures and events that I abhor? Yes. Do I think that matters? Not to anyone but me. How I feel about Thomas Jefferson owning, and let's be real here, raping slaves, is no more important than how I feel about MacGyver or Raisin Bran. In fact, it's actually less important because my feelings about Raisin Bran at least inform how I approach Raisin Bran. My feelings about Thomas Jefferson's slaves and what he did to them doesn't influence shit. I don't have a decision to make regarding slavery because slavery isn't legal. I can't bring Thomas Jefferson to justice because he's dead. I can't alleviate the suffering of his slaves because death has already done that. To try to retroactively punish Thomas Jefferson by saying, well, no monument for you then, that's not rational. The man's dead. He doesn't give a fuck. 
Robert E. Lee's statue, to me, probably exists because he was a brilliant military mind who was arguably one of the greatest generals in American history. He consistently prevailed over enemies with much greater numbers and firepower. He may have ultimately lost the war, but the South was always doomed to lose, in my opinion. They didn't have the numbers advantage, they didn't have the technological edge, and they had to worry about the constant threat of a slave uprising at the same time they were fighting a war. And I hate to say it, but we all know it's true, people from the South are by and large dumber than their northern counterparts. They had too many disadvantages to ever hope to win. One more thought on Robert E. Lee before I go. Look, he wasn't a nice man. He wasn't a good person, not by modern standards. But he was someone who very nearly led the Union Army. Lincoln wanted him to do so. He turned it down because he was from Virginia and Virginia was seceding. At the end of the day, he was a Virginia patriot more than he was ever a traitor to the United States. He was personally not in favor of the war. He thought secession was a bad idea. He expressed as much in his private letters. I think that if I was told, hey TJ, you've either got to lead an army in defense of your homeland, or you have to lead an army against your homeland, I would struggle with that choice, just as Robert E. Lee did. You could choose to fight for your home or to fight against your home. Can you imagine being instrumental in going to a place where you live or where you grew up and raising it to the ground and killing people you once lived with or maybe that you still live with all because Trump ordered you to? All because of a conflict that you don't even feel particularly invested in? I think Robert E. Lee made the wrong decision, mind you. I think he should have chosen to side with who he thought would win. Pragmatic choice is always the best. But I can't really blame him for not wanting to say, fuck my homeland of Virginia. I'm going to take up arms against it because I'm being ordered to. I think his decision to fight for the losing side was an act of conscience and an act of patriotism. Misguided, but understandable. Ultimately, though, history will remain there for us to peruse and learn from or venerate or whatever we want, regardless of what statues are put up or taken down. Robert E. Lee or Abraham Lincoln are still going to have the same fucking legacies, whether they have big statues or not. Lee is always going to be the brilliant general of a deeply flawed and unrealistic losing side of a brutal war. Lincoln is always going to be the great emancipator and the man who kept the Union together through the most turbulent chapter of American history so far. One man's legacy pretty clearly outshines the other, but a different roll of those historical dice? And who fucking knows? Maybe greatness becomes shit and failure becomes greatness. I feel like I've just spat forth a rambling mess of loosely connected nonsense. So if any of you out there found even a hint of merit in my jabbering, please give this video a thumbs up and help me continue to be a rambling fool for a living by becoming a patron of my work on Patreon. Without my patrons, this channel is not possible. Link is down there in the description. I'm TJ Kirk. Peace the fuck out. And hey guys, I got new shirts. Brand new shirts, and I also have a brand new poster. Check it out in the fucking t-shirt store, also in the description down below.